So uh, we're from the Appnovation Montreal team. Appnovation is a company mostly based out of Vancouver. It has offices all over the world. There's an office in Montreal, and we all work there as uh, back-end developers on Drupal. Um, I've been at Appnovation since December. Kurt, you've been uh, a little over a year. Over a year. You just joined as a co-op co in, in May. Yeah. But uh, we've been back in develop developers for a way longer. I've been in Drupal since uh, 2008, 2009, uh, as a full stack, and then specializing in back end for three years. Um, I've been doing Drupal development, both front end, back end, for know, six, seven years now. Drupal 6 time frame. And for me, it started in September 2012. So I've been working on this for almost three and a half years, and I'm a master student at Concordia, master's in software. So I just started my co-op at Appnovation like two months back. So I resume my Drupal work for that. So, what about you? Who are you? Who are you guys? You're from Quebec? Tourism Quebec. Tourism Quebec. What do you do with specialty? Drupal? Uh, yeah, Yeah, that's all. How about you guys? You just arrived. Montreal. From Montreal. You're all Drupalers for a long time. Huh? You've been working on Drupal for a long time. Yeah, well, it will be fun enough. <laughs> for a long time, enough. How many in this room are Drupal 7 specialist developers? <laughs> like half the room? Yeah. From those Drupal 8? Hold on. Uh, how, many, yeah. how many are front end devs? Okay. A few people. Yeah, you know, you know, you know. Uh, any, any WordPress devs? Maybe. Well, <laughs> get a, get a, no. Welcome. Well, well, welcome to Drupal. <laughs> Anyone does something else exotic that uh, are, are newer, like a React dev? Yeah. But you're all, you're all, you're all wanting to learn about how to be a DA developer. That's why you're here. I assume. So well, I guess we're all wondering, why, why is it so hard to learn DA? What's so special about it? Yeah, yes. Uh, I was on a project where we were, this was last year, we were ramping up on learning Drupal 8, and we were working on a project at the same time. Such a terrible way to work, because you don't know the best practices right off the bat. Uh, and uh, at that time, D8 didn't have some of the modules we needed uh, for the project. And as we were looking at the timeline and the budget, uh, we realized Drupal 8's not going to work. Uh, so we kind of downgraded to Drupal 7 and did the project that way. Um, I'm sure what else I can add to that. What, why, why, did, why, why did you, uh, uh, what made you realize it wouldn't work? Like, uh, oh, there were a number of modules that uh, just weren't ready and we didn't have the time or money or experience to develop those modules, uh, like uh, some Adobe Analytics tracking and some other, other modules, I forget which ones they were. Uh, Drupal 7 was certainly more full to, fully featured for the project. And when was that? Uh, this was uh, around this time last year. Okay. Uh, we did the switch out. Uh, but I think Drupal 8 has come a, lot, a long way since, uh, since the 8.1, 8.0 branch. Uh, and uh, if we compare it to the upgrade from D6 to D7, it's really a whole different kind of piece. Actually. Yeah, so probably when I, I started working on Drupal 7, so after working on a few projects on 7, I, I got the opportunity to work on D6. That was like, you know, going back from D7 to D6. So I, you know, got the experience of comparing, you know, what we, what they added in D7 rather than D6. And definitely there wasn't, you know, a big learning curve when switching from D6 to D7, but as compared to D7 to D8. So when, now when we're getting our hands on D8, we're trying to see, you know, what they've added, how things have changed. It's definitely a big learning curve. And that's why it's getting so hard, you know, for people to actually 
get even the confidence of even trying to collate, you know, because a lot of people they are really skeptical, okay, should we go to D8, even clients and stuff like that, they, they don't want to migrate to D8, because that's the perception right now, you know. Yeah, I would even go further, it's not even a learning curve, it's a whole different product that, that just happens to do the same things that D7 did with the responsive interface. So when I started looking at it, I, I, I didn't have any didn't know my way around. I had to learn the basics, almost uh, of programming that I forgot from my university days. Like, okay, what's what, what's what's an interface? That's how that's how hard it was for me to start. So, so D eight, it, it almost shouldn't be just an increment of a number on D seven. It should be called a new kind of product, a new kind of thing. So everyone that tries to just jump on it. It, 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 they struggle with it. So, you know, we, we all at some point try to learn it the wrong way. I think you are starting with your experience on the project. You, yeah. fought, you guys thought, oh, you know, the client, we bid with the D7, but the client wants D8, let's just wing it and, and try and find out what happens. Yeah, the client was really pushing D8. Uh, they had gone to a, a DrupalCon, they were really uh, motivated by some Acquia talk, um, pushing Drupal 8 forward for the project. Uh, our people who uh, actually wrote the uh, proposal for the uh, uh, for that client, uh, we started out with Drupal 7 because we knew Drupal 8 wasn't going to work at that point, but they kind of nudged us into Drupal 8. So as we went through the Drupal 8, uh, as I mentioned before, we found that uh, uh, we couldn't get everything in on time. They had an aggressive schedule too, uh, on time, on budget, that was the worst part. Um, so we were certainly learning, uh, the team on the project was learning Drupal 8 as we went. We didn't know the best practices. Uh, so it was really a terrible way to learn. And one of the things I did in the Drupal 8 site is I had a, a nice little static class to access some of the taxonomy terms uh, within the project uh, just to make some generic, uh, it was a basically an API for, them, for all the developers to uh, access the ta taxonomy in various ways. Um, I know now, after doing more Drupal 8 training, there's a better way to do that. We'll probably get to that a little bit later. Yeah, I'd also like to add, you know, like when I started looking at D8, so I went a few documents, you know, a few books that were on it, but that really didn't help a lot, to be honest, you know, like going just for documents, knowing what changed, wasn't really the best way to start, you know, seeing what, what change in the and stuff like that. Because it was really different, you know, from that. So, uh, what at what point did the project go back to D7? Uh, after about uh, two or three months, yeah. we were realizing, hey, this yeah, isn't gonna make the their deadline, so we went down to D7. I think everything we did in that first two to three months, we did in the first week in Drupal 7. We were more familiar with Drupal 7. And uh, yeah, the project definitely proceeded more rapidly in, in Drupal 7 for the client. So we, we were going to say, like, it's different doing something by reading about it than doing it in practice. But in your case, you decided you're going to do it in practice first and read about it along the way. Yeah. That didn't really work either. It really worked out too well. Not, not the best plan. So. So I, in my case, though, uh, I, I set out to learn D8 on a company project. We said, okay, let's, let's see if we can turn this into a research and development project. We're going to try and uh, remake the interface for a multilingual content editing. So they gave me that, that job. So said, okay, open up Drupal 8, find out how the multilingual forms work. So I was going through like the manager for content translation, trying to read through the form system. And I didn't know anything about all of these new concepts, so each time I ran into something new, I would go like Google it, read blog posts, would watch some 
re record at DrupalCon conferences. It would take hours and hours and, and hours. And I was making very slow progress, learning one concept after another. I watched one hour about plugins, one hour about dependency injection containers, and taking me days and weeks. And then uh, again in the summer, we started another R&D project for uh, uh, integrating Twig across two systems. Then I was, I was starting to get it better, but I put in so much effort. And I really still wasn't very ready to take on a true Drupal 8 side build project. What else did, did you guys do like, to try to, um, try to learn VA? Uh, yeah, we kind of had our own, uh, an internal Appnovation D8 uh, program course uh, set up, but it wasn't uh, it wasn't fully complete. It was rather more of the beginner stuff. Uh, I know what we're going to talk about here today uh, has a lot more in it yeah. and some better content. Yeah. Other than I can start with that. All right, so let's move on to the big reveal. The D8 yeah. cards. Yeah, so I think uh, we were actually trying to find resources. So this was about last year when I was working at the company back in Delhi, India. So we had this team from Aqua that visited our company. And because there was this tie up with Aqua, you know, our company had. So there were these four or five people, and among them was Tanesa, you know, who, who is actually the creator of this website, d8cars.com. Although it was not on the agenda to discuss D8, you know, they were just there to know, you know, how people practice and stuff like that. But like a lot of us were really curious to know, you know, when and how we can actually merge or dive deep into Drupal 8. So Tane actually introduced us to d8cars.com at that time. And you know, he actually told us, you know, at Aqua, what they did was, you know, they created these single cards, which we'll show you just in a moment. So what they, you know, as a team, they just sit, they just discuss this card for like 15, 20 minutes. It has a few resources that you can actually go to to actually solve these cards. Well, like whenever they have an, an hour or so in like a day or two, they'll just try to solve it, try to come up with the solution of this card, and the team will then sit back together at Aqua, and you know they discuss you know what they actually learned, what they actually found out, you know things changed. That was a pretty good way, you know, that he introduced us to at that time. You know, like this would be a really good way to actually you know coming up with people, you know, getting to know the right sources, and actually discussing things, you know, how to actually help each other, you know, to learn D8. So that's I think what we are here to talk. So that was your experience before you joined Appalachian. I joined Appalachian in, in December, and by then they decided, I think in the fall or early winter, they decided the eight cards was the right training tool, but they weren't so sure. So after I joined, they told me, like, okay, your first few weeks, do these things, because we need a D8 team ready. We have these D8 projects. They're not taking off, and they're even being downgraded. So we need a solution to that. So I came in in December, and I started doing the exercises one after another. I would do like two or three per day just because that was my whole day. And even after, even though I, I've been spending like half the year before working on the eight, I found that there's a lot that was in the cards that were still gaping holes in my, my knowledge of the Drupal 8 API. Mm -hmm. and um, yeah, yeah, Drupal 8 definitely filled out more, uh, these cards filled out more than our previous internal course. Uh, we also had a, a bit of a Competition in the Montreal office to see who would go get through the cards first, which I won very unfairly. <laughs> he was assigned all the time. We were all working on projects. So. Uh, yeah. But uh, what, what, what time did you start on the cards? Like, uh, I started on the cards maybe February, yeah. March Not this year. Really Has really late for that competition, so. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, didn't I, I think I, I probably didn't start at that time because I was busy in projects and then I had to resume my master's. But like, I started doing the cards in maybe September, or to October maybe. So that's when I started working on these cards, you know, just, and that was, you know, just for me. I, I was not even working in a company at that time. I was doing my master's. I, I was in my study term. So I just, you know, like going to the market that time, I knew, you know, D8 was more in demand. So when I need to go out for a co op or, or an internship in Drupal maybe, so they demand more of me. So that's when I you know, started doing the get cards and that definitely helped me to get my interview clear at that mission for sure. 
Um, I, I want to show the card before we talk about that. So this is what, this is an example of one of the cards I found. I found it's pretty difficult. So you get like a split. You get the, the instructions on the left and the challenge on the right. And the challenge is designed to be very focused and very simple. And the instructions are also designed to be very quick to follow. Sometimes you have just a blog post. Sometimes you have a 10-minute video. So they want to get you up to speed as fast as possible. So this one is number five is about the new block system. So if you say, see, you have the objective. We want you to do this. You're going to create a block type. With its own so there was no block type in this. Now we're going to do that. Read this blog post. It's actually up until it's me. It's a blog. Yeah, it's not a video. But we're going to explain to you the new block system as quickly as possible. Now, your exercise. Go ahead, fire up your ID, create a blog type. We're going to pull from this API here, just so you can experience the new services and the, uh, let's just say, the client, double HTTP client. And, and also, integrate with Tron. So good, good luck here. Yeah. <coughs> Do this one. So, and the, these cards, you know, seem, seem pretty uh, basic, and they won't take much of your time, you know, because the resources that they share are pretty, pretty well, you know, laid out, pretty to the pinpoint. And for example, this card, you know, it, it really introduced you to the differences between the blocks actually in D7 and D8, you know, because there's a there's a major difference between the block system that existed in D7 and D8. So, like, if if you go through this card for sure, you'll get a very good hands-on D8 block system. And that's it, you know. And then you can just go on creating as many blocks as you want, and you'll be really familiar with the D8 blocks. So th it's like you know, it's, it's it's like one resource that can help you to get to the entire knowledge of D8 block system. So yeah, I, I saw pick, I picked this one. Uh, go back to the this topic. Right? How we use the card. So there's 21. They're not in order. There's ones that are very easy, and there's ones that are extremely hard. And I'm sure there's there's other cards that you've never seen the topic before. And some cards you already know by now, so you can't pick them in any order. Okay. I think you, you said you skipped all the team cards, I guess or not. Right? Yeah, I haven't done my theme and cards yet, but uh, uh, since I had done the uh, training the year before, I, I, I just sort of skipped over the ones that I remembered, <laughs> which is fun to do, I think. Yeah, it was crazy enough to, to do them in order because that was my assignment. <laughs> I didn't do them in order. For sure. do them. <laughs> We're doing them part time. Right there. Yeah, after, after, after. So uh, it was pretty fun. Yeah, the uh, whole instance of Drupal 8 with all the different modules I was producing, and then my, my laptop died, and I had to get a new one. So I, I lost all of my earlier cards. Mm -hmm. well, let's start over and, 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 and resume from the middle with a new laptop and, and no data from the beginning. So in any order, it'll work. All right, so now what are we doing? Well, I, I'm actually on the Drupal 8 site build right now, which is going pretty well. Uh, you know, it, it was one thing doing the, the training, but when you have to start solving problems in Drupal 8, the, you remember the training, but there's still another challenge to overcome, is uh, how do I apply this? I I'm looking at a problem. I have to copy one type of field to another type of field because we decided to replace them. What kinds of service do I need? Where do I go? I, I have the experience, but I still find that I'm not fast until I, I practice something doing something many times over. Yeah. 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 You're, you're on the yeah. AppNovation website itself. It's like yes. maintenance. Yeah, yeah so, so the AppNovation.com website, that's a corporate website. It's it's on D8 now. It's like it's almost you know completely migrated to D8. So we're trying to you know, implement a lot of things, you know, a lot of features that were there in D7 version. So we are trying to you know, integrate here. And to be honest, you know, it's it's actually a, a good learning curve that I'm experiencing right now, because uh, the the trainings that they definitely helped, and they definitely you know helped me to actually you know clarify a few things that I didn't know earlier. But yeah, I mean, it, it's it's been good, you know. But still, I, I'd say there's a big learning curve that is involved for the D8 website that I'm, I'm learning on, I'm, I'm working on. And probably I'll, I'd like to you know work on a fresh D8 project now, because that's when I joined the company that was almost built. So it's like you know more of the you know bug fixes and maintenance stuff. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I might be starting a D8 website next month from scratch. OK, 
Are you doing the guy you want your migration still? Uh, I haven't been on that one for a while. I'm still stuck in Drupal 7 land. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I want to get into the Drupal 8 land. And, uh, we, what we've done in Montreal is we've got a client who has a Drupal 7 website. And I think it's uh, small enough and easy enough to hit on a lot of the learning points. You know, you get multilingual, you get blocks, you get content types, that sort of thing. And just to get some team experience in uh, uh, building a Drupal 8 site, uh, unfortunately, real work has uh, taken over. Uh, but we're doing that in Drupal 8, and I haven't been looking at that yet in a while, but the migration I have looked at D8 migrations. They look uh, very interesting. And my little YAML file. That's one to do the, the basics. Uh, yeah. Yeah, a YAML file to do one of the basics, or uh, create classes to help it import. And it's, it's pretty interesting, actually. All right. So just tell us about the cards already. Like, <laughs> enough exposition. Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna show you what the topics are and what they involve. You wanna start with a few, would you? Uh, I mean, the card one, yeah, I think it, it was really basic, the configuration management. So I think most of the people who worked on Drupal 7, they know what features are and you know what features module does. Mm -hmm. And for us as well, you know, like every D7 project, features was an integral part of the things, you know, where people were, a lot of people were working on the project. So I was really curious to know, you know, what they were going to do with features in D8, because, you know, it was being used in so much, you know, contention. But then, you know, like, to be honest, I didn't know about configuration management before I came up to d8cards.com, and I saw this first card and said, you know, configuration management. So then, you know, I came to know that they've added another module called configuration management in the D8 code, which helps you to export all your content, strong arm features via viable files from your dev servers to your production servers and in a very easy and convenient manner as compared to features. So yeah, I think, you know, I, I, I suggest, you know, this is a pretty simpler way as compared to features to actually export all your, you know, stuff. So that's one of the easiest parts. Yeah. Just create, but, yeah, one of the easiest parts. Create some content types and then export the configuration, import it back in. That's the only thing you need to know about the system. So it's very easy. Yeah. Uh, number two was not even about Drupal 8 core, it was about the paragraphs module. I think I think uh, Tana, I put this in there because paragraphs is becoming such an important part of making websites now. Yeah. If you don't know it, you're you're kind of missing something. Maybe it'll be important one day. Yeah, and I, th I think when, when he was there back at a company like last year, he actually you know the a lot of us we didn't know about the paragraph module to be honest, and he actually introduced us to paragraph module in D7, and he said you know how it can actually you know ease the you know, the work of content managers. This paragraph module it actually, you know, provides much more flexibility by adding content, actually. Uh, configuration forms is a uh, nice and easy way to store configuration information uh, within, the, within the Drupal database. It's uh, fairly straightforward. It's your basic form API plus a configuration API. Well, yeah, the form API, it's, it's changed a bit. Like the, the form elements are still what they are. The forms themselves are classes. You're not yeah, you're you're using right. info class or anything like that. You're making a subclass of the base form. And there's a specific class for system forms. Uh, the one tricky part about this is that I think it has a feature for locking down different config variables. So if you don't tell it which configuration variables we want to be editable from that form. Yeah, yeah. nothing it will be saved, so it's, it's protected from this kind of. Thing. It, it could be changed. Uh, but the form API, I think, is a lot simpler now in D8 than it was in D7. Yeah. Uh, migration. Migration. That that one's a big one because the migration system now is part of core. And you're no longer writing migrations in PHP. You're you're creating an entity in YAML that selects which plugin your migration will run on. So you have to learn the whole back and forth on this. I had, I had, to, I had to use XDebug to get that one done, honestly. 
Yeah. Because you're, you also have to use custom modules to import from a CSV. Question? Excuse me. Uh, when you were talking about migrations, uh, yeah. for future migrations, because uh, for uh, D7, uh, you can't export anything in YAML? Uh, that's a good question. You, there, there's a sort of migration builder in D8 that will connect to a D7 database generate migrations for you automatically and import them in D8. Oh. So it, it will go and read all of your field configurations and things like that directly in the database. <coughs> That's not part of one of the cards, but it's a feature of Drupal 8. I, I, I don't know if it's very stable. We've been experimenting with it on the test migration we're doing for the IY. Mm -hmm. But it, the idea is you take any D7 site, you click around, and it upgrades to a D8 site. You know, your <coughs> mileage may vary depending on uh, what, what modules you're using. I think the Paragraphs module does not support this at all. I, I had to start I, I to do like a bit of the, the, the upgrade path for Paragraphs and it's still completely not, not finished at all. Can I ask a question about yep. uh, you're talking the D8 cards in regards to, you know Drupal 7 and you want to get to know Drupal 8, but right. if you're new to Drupal, you don't have would it be easier because you don't have to flip back and see how the concepts differ? If you were a new Google user, would you recommend the D8 cards or would you go a different path? That's a good question. I think if you don't know Drupal, you're missing a lot of the jargon. Can I say that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, 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 they're not going to explain to you what a content type is in yeah. D8 cards. But it's going to say, like, create a content type. You know, you know what other uh, book uh, or web store? Cards whatever to look at. Yeah, yeah. D7 cards. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, D7 cards and look at D8 cards. Yeah. Um, I think Drupal.org has some information. Uh, they've been better with the D8 yeah. documentation, yeah. but it may not be a full, it may not be complete yeah. yet. But like the main aim, the D8 cards were created were for the devs who were already working on your D7, who had missing experience on D7, and they wanted to know stuff, you know, how yeah. they can actually shift to the idea. Yeah. I, I was already totally that. get that. Exactly. But um, so, I'm so yeah. that I wonder if a, a new Drupal user would find it easier to start with Drupal 8 and learn the concepts that are appropriate yes. for that. Yeah. Is there a Drupal 8 Bible now? Like, yeah. Yeah, before there was big thick. There, there, I know there's like, those uh, video training websites. Drupalize Me. Drupalize Me and uh, okay. buildamodule.com. They, they've been at, they've had those courses for a long time. Probably it's a better option if you're starting from zero. Right? If you're starting from That's exactly it. I mean, I'm from the Word, WordPress world, yeah. and I'm trying to jump, and I took a, like, a DA introduction. Okay. And then every time that I'm looking for like, tutorials, they're saying, OK, you should learn the Drupal set. And I'm, I'm here to understand. I'm going to learn Drupal 7 and then do those D8 cards and then I will be okay. Or I jump right away to Drupal 8. Because yeah. honestly, I've seen both like, like back ends and all that stuff. And Drupal 8 is way better to me than Drupal 7 was. But it seems that all the functions that you want for the front end is, is in the core of Drupal 8. So. So, so I wouldn't recommend you learn Drupal 7 okay. to learn Drupal 8. Because yeah. like I said at the beginning, it's two different systems, almost. Exactly. It, the, that's, that's a fairly good the idea. The devs are struggling to learn Drupal 8, so imagine yeah, exactly. the roundabout. So I should jump in Drupal 8 and don't look <laughs> backward and just go through as, as it? As a front-end developer, Drupal 8 will offer you the Twig system, which is way better than whatever we had in Drupal 7. And it's also it's co it's compatible with lots of other PHP apps. It's the same language as what they use on Python, I think. And it's pretty similar to what they have, like Liquid, something like that. Some other template, I don't know. But it's, it's <coughs> as standardized as they can make it. So yeah. you're way better off just starting from Twig. Drupal 8. Drupal 8 and then? Yeah, start from Twig, that's all. Yeah, I, I, I think, think that's a fairly good idea, you know. Like, if you want to start in D8, just start from D8, yeah. D8 and that's it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I would also agree with all of that. It's, it's such a different system. Uh, you can avoid all the bad practices that you can get into with Drupal 7. Uh, Drupal 8 is much more organized uh, behind the scenes, uh, code-wise, uh, than Drupal 7. I think. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, so, 
the next one, block system, I already showed it. Uh, for those who have worked at Drupal 7, you remember that in V7, whenever we create things, we call books. And for specific kinds of things, we have a specific thing called the info. And that's all gone. There are no more info hooks in V8. Now we have plugins, which are classes that have a special kind of, of comment at the top that replaces your info hook. So Drupal will read through all your classes, will read those comments, and be able to detect what code is available in your system. So blocks are one of the perfect examples of this. You say, okay, but this is the block of this ID, and then this, uh, this block will now show up in your block administration path. The other changes to blocks is they're now fieldable, so you don't need this old crusty module called bean or whatever, boxes. Bean. Well, okay. it's beans. There was beans yeah, and boxes. There's a bunch of other things. Yeah, a bunch. And they're all exportable, so you don't need to have a feature or blocks module. Right. Uh, part number six is where it gets very, very arcane. Because it's, it's, it's even, the, the guy split this card into two cards. There's one here, and so you don't get discouraged. There's another one about it later on. Services and dependency injection. Uh, here it just says, try to follow along. We're going to read a bunch of, of very abstract philosophy about how applications should be written. That's the way Drupal 8 is written. You guys, you guys want to share your experience with dependency uh, injection? Uh, yeah, this card is mainly about services in general. Uh, services are uh, a nice little way to uh, create code, sorry to explain if I jump into the other slide <laughs> later on. Basically we have a container, a, a box, a black box for now, that contains the site. Services are, uh, are classes or, or other, mostly classes that register with Drupal and provide some functionality. Now, when I mentioned a lot earlier about uh, creating a static class originally in Drupal 8, I would now do it as a service, mainly because as a static class, every time PHP launches up, it's going to load that static class. Uh, services will only load the class if it is used. So if you call a service, the container will create the instance of that object, return it to you, and allow you to uh, perform any operations on it. Yeah, and I think if, if an analogy of what we had in V7 for that exists is when we would use module load include to try to load code from other modules into our set. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh -huh. there's this, this thing we need from this other module. The file's not loaded. Call it to include the file. So that's now, it's now handled automatically or even magically by the so It's also a little different from that as well when that the service is is named and could be oh, yeah. easily replaced. Uh, which is which is quite nice because you wouldn't have to go through yeah. the process of updating so all your code. One, one good example is there's now a developer setting, I think there's a card about that later on. Where you can replace the caching backend when you're developing with something that's called a null cache. So all of Drupal, as far as it's concerned, is just getting caching as a service. But what you did for your development environment is you replace that cache with something that just erases whatever comes in and never returns anything. So you never have to empty the cache when you're developing. A feature we, we wish we could have had in Drupal 7 instead of typing drush cc over. <laughs> Cron queuing. Well, who's used a cron queue before? Nobody. You have. Cron queues are awesome. You have to try it at least once. If you've ever built a cron job that times out, that, that's where you need a cron queue. You have a, you have a task that gets called for a maximum amount of time and then waits until the next cron to start over. So this card will show you, here's how we create a cron queue with V8. It's now a plugin, no longer an info. Did you do this one? Um, I think I skipped it. I may have done it, but I still don't remember it. Text filters used to be called input filters. 
I don't know why they were ever called input filters. It was, they ran on output. <laughs> so now they're called text filters. They're also plugins. You just write a class in the right directory, with the right annotation, it gets found automatically by Drupal, and you can create your text formats out of them in the same administration panel as you could in so. Ooh, a front end one. Well, not here. Mm -hmm. I think not not the front end. So uh, card number nine, attaching assets. So uh, in Drupal 7, if you wanted to put JavaScript or CSS on the page, you have to call Drupal add JS, Drupal add CSS, that's gone. Now you have to define libraries. So you say, oh, my module, great library, has this, these JS files, has these CSS files, and it depends on these other libraries, which is very important because now jQuery is not automatically loaded on the page. So if your thing depends on jQuery, you have to specify the jQuery library. Then the way you attach it is you put it on your render element or there's a library attach twig command to do the same in the team. This card shows you how to do that. And even in, in the, the card then the local development, yeah. this, the, there's all the settings of local or PHP file, you know, where you can actually manage your local caching and you know local stuff like that so that you don't need to push things to server that you need on your local one. Yeah. Okay. That, that's a pretty basic idea. That's great because you don't have to go and Google the documentation, how to set up your <coughs> local development environment. The file's already there with yeah. all the things you need. You just uncomment the specific thing and it works for that stuff. This one's a really easy card. Uh, content entity types. Yeah, entities are now plugins. And they have a, like triple the amount of annotations of any other plugins. Uh, this one just shows you how easy it is to use the new Drupal console that's uh, inherited from Symfony to generate a lot of code that declares a new entity because we don't want you putting stuff in nodes anymore that doesn't belong there. It doesn't have to. It's so easy to create an entity. Just use the console and generate it. Yeah, and probably like when, I, when you guys are working with D8, Drupal console is definitely a you know, thing that you should try to get your hands on, try to work with it more. Because it will help you generate a lot of code that you don't have to write it out. Just, just a few commands and it will give you an entire structure of a module, an entire structure of a custom entry type, you know. So just you can go on and add your changes. It, it's, it's really helpful in Drupal console as well. Yeah. And pretty much everything is an entity now. Uh, it can be called with the entity API. I guess there's a slide later on for that. But there's also configuration entity. But they yeah. have another card about this? I don't remember. Anyway. Configuration entities, they export to YAML, they can't have fields. That's the difference. Uh, theming. Right, now you can choose which base theme you want to start your theme off. And, and Drupal Core comes with different base themes because there's two kinds of people in this world. There's the kind that like to have lots of classes like field, uh, odd, number, the thingy, number, dash one. And they, they, they do so you share our hierarchy of selectors to write their CSS. And there's people that hate classes and just want to write straight markup and attach classes themselves. They couldn't coexist unless they each had their own team. So now you can pick one team over the other. Uh, I think stable is meant to keep all the class names always the same through the lifetime of the code. So you won't your your CSS won't break down if you prefer to use that one. But uh, do we suffer from dividers? Dividers? From all the divs from uh, the subtle. Now we suffer from template ideas. There, there's so many <laughs> templates. They eliminated team function, so everything is a template. Um, this is my personal opinion. It has nothing to do with the cards, but you should be writing object-oriented CSS as components. It's 2017. Don't use deep selectors. It will just give you a nightmare. Uh, logging. Logging is now a service. So you request it from the dependency injection uh, container or as a dependency to your service. So you no longer have to call like uh, Drupal Watchdog if you want to add to a log. You create a channel in the logger and you do that. It's a very quick challenge to, to do once so you've figured out service. Yeah, that is a quick challenge and they standardized the uh, the methods on the uh, on the client login classes so you can get say you know warning error information etc. So 
it is pretty nice. I guess you can also configure it to log to the file system and all kinds of other neat things. Yeah, it's designed to be swappable. So you can log to a syslog, you can log to the watchdog, you can log like, I don't know, the cloud if you want. It's all transparent. Yeah, just a question that popped up. Uh, can, can I do any cards or do I have to do it serially? You no. can do any cards. Yeah. There's no serial to it actually. I think most of us, we picked a card which I think the case which we wanted to solve or which we wanted to learn at that moment. So, so that was more of you know how we did the cards, I guess, right? Yeah. Like, but I think, but he, he did it in, in order because he had a lot of time. That was my assignment, basically. <laughs> Did you do the cards at the same time in parallel? Did you talk to each other? Um, I didn't know this guy until two months ago. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I. He was in India until uh, yeah, I don't know, like when I started September. the cards. Yes. Yeah. So it, no, in September I was in Montreal, but it, like I just joined the company two months back. I'm, I'm a co-op at the company, so I, I did the cards, you know, on my own. He did the cards in his company. But the good thing is when we when we met, he said, "Do you know about the eight cards?" I said, "Yes, I, d I did them to learn the eight and." We didn't, we didn't, I, I didn't know him and he said, even I've done them. So, you know, I think a lot of people are, you know, using D8 cards individually to actually switch to D8 or learn D8. Yeah. Features. Maybe you've heard that there's no features in Drupal 8. No. <laughs> features is back and better than ever. They rebuilt it completely. So now the point of it isn't to move configuration between environments, it's to modularize your configuration. Because it very quickly becomes a list of like hundreds of configuration entities in your sim folder. And then if you're on a team, yes? Uh, maybe I, I miss uh, something, but uh, what is the difference uh, between features and uh, migrations? Uh, good question. A migration is when you have data that you want to put into the site, like oh, the okay. content. So just, uh, yeah. So okay. your, your client gives you a big Excel spreadsheet of all the content, and you say, okay, put that in Drupal. You do an Excel to Drupal migration. Yeah, and I think okay. usually, usually features gets confused with uh, configuration management. Yes. Rather than it's a rather huge than confusion that we still live with in Drupal Seven world. Yeah. Everyone's using features. There's no configuration management. Yes. Have you created the e-commerce website in Drupal 8 yet? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, the oh. website I'm working on right now has e-commerce, but it's uh, using API integration with the uh, e-commerce platform. Okay, like, 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 uh, it's, it's like it's more like a Shopify of something. Okay, okay, okay. Because no, like, that's not Shopify. That's that's a, one of the main points that I was asking. Like, like, when you work with Drupal 7, like, you can have the e-commerce yes. e module, but in Drupal 8 it seems to not be, have been ported to uh, Drupal 8. Yeah, I think Drupal Commerce is in beta right now, yeah. and Ubercart's in alpha. There's still an Ubercart. There's still an Ubercart. <laughs> yeah. so uh, yeah, have you experienced the, those beta, like uh, those move to e-commerce? E uh, I have not, but I have... Um, on a project now to look at e-commerce uh, projects, specifically Magento yeah. integration yeah. Uh, with Drupal, and I'm sort of doing a comparison. I want to see where where uh, Ubercard and <coughs> Drupal Commerce are right now in Drupal 8, as well as where Magento integration is. So you're trying to integrate Magento instead of using the Drupal Commerce module. Yeah, Drupal Commerce is its own uh, commerce eco ecosystem, yeah. and uh, Magento. Is that's it, actually it. a good question, but uh, Magento is its own. Yeah. Shop. How can you integrate them? Like, why would you use like Drupal with Magento if you're doing e-commerce only? There, there, that's uh, a good one, right? So we saw at the DrupalCon this year some people presenting about that. And I think the answer from our bosses anyway at Appalachian is that Magento is, it just sells better to businesses because it's it's a store platform. It has everything you need from a store. It's better it's inventory. It has yeah. everything you can manage. It, the only thing it doesn't have very well of its content management and presentation. So they're using Magento for the store and 
the front of it, the boutique where they present the products and the shopping cart they use people. Yeah, I think uh, uh, Drupal Commerce and Ubercart are more geared towards smaller and medium sized businesses. And but, yeah. uh, Magento can do all the way up to the end of the Seriously, level. consider also Shopify integration. There's a Shopify module for, for Drupal. I think they have a Drupal 8 version, but it's pretty stable. And it's the same idea as the Magento, except Shopify is for a way smaller business. So, is there a clear distinction? Uh, between the features module and configuration management? Yes. Thank you for getting us back on track. These <laughs> <laughs> are all good questions. So, so features runs on top of configuration management. It, it reads the configuration from the configuration management system. And it does one more thing for you. It exports that configuration into individual modules. Mm -hmm. And it uses this using something called an assignment plugin. So if you say, Generate me a feature out of my uh, blog post content type. And I say, okay, blog post has all these fields, it's in all these views, probably want all of this stuff in the same place. Let me generate that for you. So it's been rewritten. It doesn't handle the actual writing of the files anymore. The files are generated by Drupal. They, the files of the, the configuration that get written to disk, that's Drupal doing it. All that feature does is channel them into one place. It gives you an interface. Click here, okay, I'm going to split all that up for you. You get one module for this, one module for that, another module for that. You can now reuse these packages of configuration on a different site if you want, or build a new site using this content type and not that other one, and so on. What's going on? No, oh, there's 10 minutes left. That's left, probably. Uh, yeah. So field formatters, they're not plugins. Yeah. What can I say? It's a plugin again. Dependency injection and service container. I know that's their real challenge. So here in this card, they explain what the difference is between a service locator and injected dependencies in services, which involves replacing a bunch of the static Drupal get me something calls with injected uh, oh. constructor injected dependencies. So once you get through that card, you're going to get it. It's going to be very easy. Composer, that's another big, big piece. I, I, I cheated, I knew Composer, I was working on it in Drupal 7. How did you guys feel going to Composer? Um, I haven't really used it yet. No? No. I think I, think I did the basic configuration and installation of using it. So it's meant to replace Brush Make, but it's way more than that because it also generates the auto loader for classes, and without that, none of your code is going to load correctly. So here it just shows you, okay, we're going to build a module, we're going to load an external PHP library, and we're going to show you how it fits into the Drupal ecosystem. Maybe you build your whole site out of Composer, maybe you just use it for your modules. I think the trend is to use it to build whole sites and use even just treat Drupal core as a library itself in, in the Composer build. Events and subscribers, yes. In Drupal 7, we had hooks. Now, in Drupal 8, we have hooks. And we have events and subscribers that come from the Symfony framework. They're mostly just for the uh, HTTP uh, request and, and uh, response events. Yeah, there's a yeah. uh, general move to get everything over to events and, and subscribers. Uh, they are, it's a fascinating card. It's an easy card, I think. But uh, once you know how to subscribe to an event, you can do stuff with whatever event you're listening to. And of course, the way to subscribe is to create a service. So you have to first finish the service card before you can understand what to do with this one. It's a tag service, so it picks up that it has to listen to events. Twig templating, uh, I talked about it a bit, but in this one, the challenge is, okay, read very short blurb about Twig, and you'll be able to access variables in it and call preprocessor functions. Uh, Twig is actually pretty fun because it does less than PHP, so you can't blow yourself up the way you could in previous templates. You cannot do database requests in Twig, of course not. Uh, the cache API and cache tags. So, what they have to do is added bubble bowl metadata, which are things that you put in render arrays that automatically will flush them out of the cache if the corresponding thing that the tag belongs to gets uh, triggered somewhere in the system. 
For instance, in this exa exercise, I think it says create a view or a block of a list of data where you attach the, the titles of a few nodes and you attach the tags for those nodes to the block. So if someone somewhere edits that node, changes the title, your block will automatically be flushed out of cache. A lot of fun doing this one. It's a real eye opener. Yeah, and I think this uh, caching <coughs> is much improved over Drupal 7 and is a very important uh, uh, current system to understand. <laughs> Last one. Okay, kernel events. I was, uh, as I was saying with the uh, uh, subscriber card, this time applying it for real because the hook init event has been taken out of Drupal. Drupal is no longer in charge of request and response initiation. This is now a Symfony component, so we have to use the Symfony event system. Uh, here, we do that with the card. We, we're tasked with creating a service. We're going to subscribe to the request event and uh, give a different page response to an anonymous user than to a login user. That involves, of course, requesting the current user service. Okay, we're getting close to the end. I don't think we have time for this uh, bonus card. Yeah, so I had, I had some times, I thought I would, there was missing topics for uh, testing in Drupal 8. If you feel like going to my GitHub page, you can read about functional JavaScript tests and uh, unit tests, but uh, probably those are more advanced topics. And uh, other tools that I thought I needed to work with Drupal 8, Drupal VM, who has heard of Drupal VM? Of course, you're a cheater. <laughs> Drupal VM is great. It's like a vagrant machine that you don't have to fight. It just you just have this YAML configuration file. Here's what I want in it. All my sites, I want these. And other people have done the hard work of configuring the system so that your sites launch, your databases are ready. It even does your own your drug aliases for you, so you can you can. Log into your site from outside the Vagrant machine using Drush aliases that you didn't have to configure. So get Drupal VM. It will even build a Drupal 8 site using Composer for you. PHP Storm, PHP Storm is a fantastic tool with Drupal 8 uh, for code completion. It understands all your objects, all your definitions, uh, finding everything for documenting stuff. It, it's the best IDE I've used. Okay. Uh, Take my word for it. I was a Sublime Text user in Drupal 7. I realized it would not work at all in Drupal 8 because the way Sublime Text reads <coughs> the completion, it just knows what letters you're using. It doesn't know your context. And Drupal 8 removed all the prefixes on everything. So you're not writing the module name, then something. So none of the autocompletes work in, in Sublime Text. Sublime Text 2 or 3? Both of them. PHP Storm is a huge investment, not money not so much, it's like a few bucks a month, but of time you have to learn how to set up your environment. The more you learn it, the more the tool ends up being what you rely on to work with. Right? These days I'm always going into Xdebug, I'm inspecting stuff, I'm running Drush commands in Xdebug. I, I can't imagine working any other way. Yeah, and if you learn PHP Storm, you've learned the other IDEs from uh, JetBrains for like Android or Java or uh, Ruby, what other other languages? It's it's pretty much the same, and that's that's sort of how I got into PHP Storm. Imagine it come in pretty handy for testing when you're talking about services and dependency injection before in the earlier part. Yeah. Those services aren't being loaded at at warmup when PHP is running. Doesn't that mean that you're not kind of getting that automatic error checking? PHP if there are issues, if you're, say, adding to a service class that's not being loaded or being loaded by whatever magical process uh, Drupal is using? Uh, you would have to set up a, a, a case for where you would want to be testing that kind of yeah. code. So, okay. so it's, a, it's a big topic. It depends what kind of test you're doing. If you're doing a unit test, you're not even going through dependency system. You're just launching your class and you're mocking the dependencies. You're creating fake loggers, fake current user services that just give you whatever your current class needs to run its test. So that, that's kind of one of the points of, of having dependency injected code. 
I meant with reflection on using PHP storm. PHP running storm. those tests. Um, I, I only run unit tests sometimes in PHP storm. Okay. But you can also use a, a SSH through PHP storm to log into your site directly. So you can run drush commands <coughs> through a Vagrant, through PHP storm, and that's support for that. Uh, yeah, I think uh, we've talked enough. Uh, if you want to say something, you're, there's like two minutes left before the other people can. Uh, thanks, thanks everybody for showing up. You were great. Thank you.